Hello, Yates County and beyond. Welcome back to another episode of Invasive Species Friday. Through this short weekly podcast, we at the HCCE hope to bring you information about the invasive species you may see around this county. So let's climb this week's fast-growing plant, Tree of Heaven. Also known as a Chinese sumac, as it comes from China and Taiwan, the Tree of Heaven was brought to North America in 1784. Arriving in Philadelphia as a horticultural specimen and shade tree, it became a popular ornamental and was widespread in nurseries by the 1840s. The plant was also brought over to California by Chinese immigrants during the gold rush for medicinal purposes. Its quick growth rate, ease of establishment, and lack of disease and insect problems made it popular, especially in urban landscaping. These traits also resulted in the Tree of Heaven becoming a widespread invasive in nearly all U.S. states and parts of Canada. Though it is highly shade intolerant, the tree thrives in poor conditions and tolerates both acidic soil and air pollution. They are typically found in disturbed landscapes like beneath power lines or at the edge of parking lots. You won't see them deep in the undisturbed forests, but they quickly spread in fields and harvest woodland. It's not uncommon to find them growing out of cracks in the pavement, either. Before we get into the copious amounts of problems with this plant, let's take a look at how to identify it and how to tell it apart from the native lookalikes. It's a fast-growing hardwood that can reach up to 80 feet in height, but is more commonly seen around 40 feet. It can grow 8 feet tall in its first year, and can live well upwards of 50 years. The 1-3 to three foot leaves are compound, and there can be 30 to 40 leaflets per leaf, each about 3 to 5 inches long and an inch or two wide. The edges of the leaflet have smooth margins, and though the fully grown leaves are green, the new growth is more of a burgundy red color. There's also a small gland on the point of the one or two teeth at the base of the leaflet. These glands are what give the Tree of Heaven its distinctive odor, which is often described as burnt peanuts or rancid peanut butter. This odor is particularly strong when the leaves are crushed. The bark of the tree is light gray and smooth, but kind of resembles a cantaloupe in texture. The small yellow-green flowers appear in clusters in the late spring and early summer. These become clusters of seeds in late summer. The seeds are papery samaras, a type of dry fruit that forms wings of fibrous tissue and contains a single seed. The most common samara-producing trees in this area are the maples, whose helicopters twirl as they drift through the air. The Tree of Heaven Samaras are tan or reddish with a seed at the center of the wing and can be transported by wind or water. A single tree can produce over 325,000 seeds per year. From this description, you may be thinking, that sounds like a sumac. The Tree of Heaven is very often mistaken for the variety of native sumac trees and sometimes black walnut and butternut as well. The compound leaves and quick growth rate can be confusing at first, but there are a few tricks to make identifying this invasive a snap. First, look at the leaf margins. Most of the sumac species have toothed leaf margins, and so does the black walnut tree. So if the leaflets have smooth edges, it's probably a tree of heaven. The winged or dwarf sumac has smooth margins, but it has distinct wings along the stem of the leaf, so it's easier to identify. Poison sumac also has smooth margins, but it's rare, and it's found in very wet areas where the Tree of Heaven and other sumacs don't grow. The fruit of the tree is also a good way to differentiate lookalikes. The sumac fruit is conical and stands upright, just like its flower clusters do. The staghorn sumac, which is very common in the region, and often shares a habitat with the Tree of Heaven, has distinct red cones of fruit, which make them easy to pick out on your adventures. Black walnut flowers are in elongated clusters, and they form hard-shelled nuts for fruit. Tree of Heaven Samaras hang loose in clusters and turn brown as they age. Finally, an effective but unpleasant way of telling whether you have a sumac or a Tree of Heaven is to crush the leaves. Sumacs don't really have a smell. Tree of Heaven, on the other hand, will let your nose know what it is. Note, don't try this if you think it may be a poison sumac, as that plant is toxic. So, what elevated Tree of Heaven from a non-native to an invasive species? Alongside its super speed growth rate, 
the root systems of the Tree of Heaven can be so extensive and robust that they damage pavement and infrastructure, which is a financial nightmare in urban areas. It produces tons of seeds each year, many of which are viable, but it also reproduces by sprouting. The root suckers can emerge up to 50 feet from the parent plant, and if the plant is cut or injured, it can send out dozens of sprouts from both the root and the stump. These sprouts are considered clonal colonies of the parent and are genetically identical to the tree it came from. Tree colonies can form dense thickets that other plants can't survive in due to the lack of space and sunlight. The tree's long leaves create a dense canopy to shade out other plants. The Tree of Heaven has another secret weapon to outcompete its neighbors as well. It produces alleliopathic chemicals in its roots that leach into the soil and suppress the growth rate of other plants. Because of its root system and its ability to send out suckers in every direction, the Tree of Heaven is not easy to get rid of, especially when it is established in an area. Smaller saplings and seedlings can be removed by hand. Larger trees need to be cut out and an herbicide should be applied immediately to the stump. It will probably take multiple applications over several years before the tree is killed. You also need to be careful, however, as the sap from the Tree of Heaven can cause skin irritation and, if it gets into an open wound, it may cause myocarditis or inflammation of the heart muscle. This tree just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? Well, there is one last thing before we wrap up this episode. Invasives helping invasives. The Tree of Heaven is from the same area as the much dreaded spotted lanternfly you may have been hearing about recently. It's the preferred host of the spotted lanternfly, and when it feeds on the tree, the survival rate of the insect is much higher, and the females produce significantly more eggs compared to other tree species. While the spotted lanternfly is not yet in Yates County, it is a matter of when, not if. We will be posting a special edition bonus episode of Invasive Species Friday to cover what you need to know about this looming threat, so keep your ears open and your eyes peeled on your adventures. And with that, we reach the end of this week's episode of Invasive Species Friday. Next Friday, we'll be back in the water, this time with a fishy fiend. Until then, we at the Yates County CCE thank you for tuning in and supporting our fight against invasive species in Yates County. <laughs>